Well, hello, Phantom Shipmates. For my first major passage of the year, uh, 2018, I'm being unfaithful to Isabel, my own uh, sailboat, and I have been invited by a professional delivery skipper to deliver this boat right here. It's an RM1270 from Figueiro de Nos in Portugal to La Trinité sur Mer in France, which is near Lorient in France. So that's about 560 miles. So I'll be filming that and uh, little episodes here and there to show you how a real, this is a, I guess I would classify this as a cruising performance boat. Uh, it has a very wide stern, open stern. It's a, uh, well, you can tell it's a fast boat by just by looking at it. So this should be a lot of fun. Uh, and I'll bring you along on the trip with me and uh, our professional delivery skipper. And I'll see, we'll see how it goes. It should be great fun. Well, those waves behind me tell a story. We've been trapped here in Figueira de Foz in Portugal for three days, unable to leave because we need to go through this narrow channel here to get out of the port and you can see those waves are breaking. And they had a terrible accident here a few years ago where a, a sailboat turned over and there were several people who lost their lives, and including one of the rescuers uh, as well. So they're very strict and no vessels are allowed in or out of this port right now, except if you're lar longer than 35 meters. Uh, I suppose they can fight these waves here, but certainly not a sailboat. And the bad news is, with all of that, is that we had a very favorable wind that was forecast it was going to carry us north to, uh, along the, the Spanish coast and then across the Bay of Biscay. That was just going to be perfect. Uh, a southern wind that was going to just carry us along that way. And now, because of this delay of three or four days while waiting for the waves to let us get outside of this uh, uh, harbor entrance, the wind has turned the other direction. The wind will now be from the north and quite unfavorable. So we'll be beating into the waves and it sounds like it will be a, a great adventure going home. So, let me just show you where that is, looking at the map. So this is Portugal here and the, the coast of Spain. And this is where we're at, right here, Figueira de Foz. And so we're gonna go out, up the coast here, around uh, Cap Finisterre, Land's End, Finisterre, and then across the Bay of Biscay, up to here. This is where La Trinité sur Mer is. Say hello to Benji. Benji is the delivery skipper with whom uh, I'm traveling. He's got more experience than I, frankly, than I ever will have in a sailboat, so I'm delighted to be on the cruise. Well, good morning. We got underway about uh, an hour ago. Finally, the waves uh, at the entrance of the harbor uh, eased off enough to let us out. And uh, this, I just want to show you what what a performance yacht this uh, this boat is that I'm on now. We are close hauled. I mean, close reaching is uh, just at 30 degrees, 35 degrees maybe, 30, 35 degrees. There's 15 to 17 knots of true wind. And we are doing well in excess of seven, seven and a half to eight knots all the time here. So this is, wow. <laughs> I don't see, I don't see seven and a half knots in my boat when I'm close hauled, <laughs> ever, ever. Well, so some gales of 40, 45 knots in the Bay of Biscay blew themselves out. And now we've got another window that starts uh, today, actually, uh, later today. Uh, that's going to carry us the 430 nautical miles home uh, with a broad reach of between 15 and 30 knots all the time. So, pour la bon tribord, c'est bon. Okay, et ben écoute, euh, avant babord. Allez, avant babord, on enlève. C'est enlevé. Plus rien traîne dans l'eau. These 
performance cruisers are quite interesting in, in how they act. Um, I'm used to, when I get on performance boats, to really taking a beating in the, for the conditions to be quite spartan inside of them. This one is very nice. One of the things I really like about this boat, this uh, RM1270, is you can see out looking forward. And that's great. You know, it's, uh, that is so nice to be able to look forward from inside the salon. Uh, I, I really appreciate that. But you can see we're in quite rough weather right now, uh, 45 meter seas, and it's not at all uncomfortable. And we've got two banks where you can uh, where you can lie down, uh, depending on, on where the um, where the sea, where the seas are coming from, or the wind is coming from actually. And uh, obviously a big forward cabin, toilets, two aft cabins, uh, cooking, uh, same as, uh, as you would expect. It's quite well laid out. I like having the uh, the two areas where you can sleep without necessarily having to hook up a lee cloth to keep it locked in. That makes it uh, quite comfortable. So, very wide, very spacious, very comfortable, and a great view. You can you don't have to stand out, sit out on the uh, in a cockpit all the time. You can actually you got a 360 degree view here, and you can see very well. So. We're flying, we're doing in very rough weather here. We've got a single reef in, and we're doing uh, eight and a half knots. So, I'm quite impressed. Well, good morning. We are both a bit knackered. We have been sailing all night long in this. It was supposed to be 15 to 20 knots, and it's been 20 to 25 knots uh, all night long. Quite uh, large sea breaking waves, gusting wind, and uh, we even had a squall. We had to put in a double reef on the mainsail and a double reef on the Genoa because of the squall. So, quite impressive. These uh, speed performance boats actually ride fairly well. I was uh, quite surprised how smooth it was. But let me show you what we're looking at here. This is 26 knots apparent wind, 27, that's what we've had all night long. It's a bit fatiguing, I have to be honest. That's, that's tiring. But let me show you what this book does with that. It goes between 9 and 11 knots. Uh, when, when we're surfing, it goes to even higher than that. These boats go really quickly. I'm not sure I'm quite accustomed to the open transom which is the trend nowadays. It's a bit daunting at uh, two o'clock in the morning having to go back there and uh, adjust the heading or the autopilot. But I'm sure I'd get used to it. volunteered for this. Hello everyone. I just want to do a very quick update on something. Uh, this year I had intended to buy an Iridium Go so that I could get weather while I was at sea and communicate. But I'm never going to be more than two days away from land at any time going up the North Sea and either to the Faroe Islands or over to Den Denmark or Norway. So I, I thought why, you know, the, the that seemed like a rather expensive solution, although a very good one, the Iridium Go. So instead, uh, another YouTuber, Thomas Ryan is his name, um, mentioned that he's using this thing. This is called a, a Garmin Enrich Explorer. And I just wanted to test it on this trip here to see if it's a gadget. It cost 435 euros, and uh, there's a, um, in, in, which compares to a, an Iridium Go, which costs, uh, you, you know, you're not going to get much, much change from 11 or 1200 euros for to install a system like that with a permanent uh, antenna. So um, this 
cost 435 or so euros and you can get uh, a subscription that you can cancel month by month that costs about 40 euros a month and it has lots of things on it it was it, it was made for trekkers and hikers and people who go mountain biking so i'm not sure i wasn't sure that it was going to be worth much to someone on a boat uh, it has lots of little features uh, navigation and you can put waypoints and routes in it but you know you're never going to do that on a boat you've got six other systems it also has an emergency sos button you can see it right here but you know i've got uh, on the vhf uh vsc system i've got um, uh, i've got my personal locator beacon that i wear with me all the time uh, we've got an eperb on board as well and you know so i can't imagine ever using the emergency sos what is neat, neat on this, though, is here's one of the features. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but um, I'm sending tracking to uh, a few friends and family. So this is me just starting across the Bay of Biscay now. Uh, we've been uh, underway now for probably uh, about 15 hours. Uh, went all night long, and now we're... Th um, um, that's just entering the Bay of Biscay, heading up toward no northern France. So you can send them at any frequency you want these little uh, updated uh, the yellow dots that, you, that uh, hopefully you can see then you can send text messages as well my glasses on here. text messages what you want to do you don't want to type the messages into this thing here that's it's some, that's something that we used to do in the 1990s it's just a nightmare the screen is way too small forget that so you pair it up with your iPad and you can type your messages here so here I've sent some messages to friends and uh, that, that works fine. They, I, the, I sent them and they received them and they sent them back to me. Um, the other thing that is of great use, what I really wanted it for is what I'm going to show you right now, is marine weather. But, so this is the weather report. I just asked, you can type in any latitude and longitude that you want. Here where it says location. There it is. Uh, it gives you uh, the basic weather, you know, but you know, it, it tells you how many knots, you, you can see here, 28 knots, 21 knots of wind, 3 to 4 meter seas. It's going to calm down this evening, uh, but then uh, later it's going to, you, you can see here, at 7 a.m. what it's going to be, and then 21 knots. So, near gale conditions at this point that I typed in, which we're, hopefully will be behind us, so we're okay. Uh, waves 4 meters currents and it takes that up for several days so okay it's not a grib or a surface an an analysis chart but it sure gives you something you know that's somewhat us usable and I sent a message to the company that uh, the company called oceans that actually provides the data to Garmin and I said who are your sources it sounded like they use a GFS and the ECM um, WM so others that they say that are appropriate lo locally. So, uh, is it a gadget or, or something useful? Um, it looks like it's useful. It's too early to tell. I'll, I'll update, update you on this. Uh, Those of you later. who operate in American waters, you can download uh, maps from NOAA. And uh, those are nautical maps. Whereas I live in Europe, that's not a that feature is not available. I get, um, I think it's called Earth Map, but just think Google Earth. It's that kind of a presentation. That's what this is. Uh, it, it's it's called Earth Map from um, from Garmin, and uh, I mean it's what's what's supplied with this. So you can still navigate with it and plot waypoints and courses, but I don't think I'll be using that. But you can send out 160 character messages um, to friends and family. Uh, to let them know, and I think I find that very useful. Um, due to a storm, I've been delayed a day, and so people won't worry. So I think that's a very useful satellite uh, communication function. Now, one additional point is that you can use that map feature on the Garmin itself, but you can see it's a very small map. I mean, you can change the scale by pushing the buttons, but uh, I, I, again, I don't, I can't imagine ever wanting to use that in a marine application. So that's why you need to pair it up with an iPad and let uh, do send your messages and look at your map and your tracking and whatever you need to do on the iPad rather than trying to use this uh, the the small screen of the uh, of the Garmin uh, Explorer. Well, good morning. Wow, uh, we 
We've got 150 miles or so left to go uh, as we uh, cross the Bay of Biscay to our destination, which is La Trinité sur Mer. Um, been a rough passage, rough weather all the way, uh, favorable winds, but uh, just not, not comfortable at all. And that reminds me, you know, uh, these delivery captains, they are a very special and unique breed of sailor. Thank God we have them. Uh, I remember when he invited me to go and come along on this trip here, pick up this boat in Portugal, go up the Spanish coastline and across the Bay of Biscay. I thought, wow, that's great. I know that Spanish coastline very well. And I was, if we go to this port here, I know a wonderful restaurant. If we go to this other port, I know a wonderful bar where they have tapas that are great. And, uh, so I very discreetly suggested to him, uh, how many stops do you plan on making as we go across? And he looked at me, he said, stops? We don't stop. <laughs> Those stops, we deliver the boat. And uh, that's kind of the mission. Their, I mean, their mentality is obviously safety comes before all else. But uh, things like comfort come way down the list. You know, and you can kind of see by the, the weather that we've come out in. Um, as long as it's navigable and safe, we go. Whereas for me, for me making a passage like this, I would be you know, looking at you know, where is the most favorable wind, uh, the looking what are the seas and what, what, what uh, challenges are we going to have and I would postpone until uh, it was as favorable as possible can be. But th for those guys, time is money, you know, so let's get going. So it's, it's a pleasure and an honor being invited to accompany uh, someone on a mission like this. Uh, this one hasn't been a whole lot of fun. Uh, hard cooking in, in weather like this, and, uh, but uh, I've learned a lot. Uh, I got on another boat, one of these boats that's really a high-performance cruiser, a high-performance cruiser, and it really is, you know. And here's the captain hard at work in his delivery year. He does 10 of these deliveries of more than 500 miles in nautical miles each each year, about 10, and uh, then many, many other uh, small uh, assignments that he does. So it's a tough way to earn a living, but he loves it. <laughs> Let's see. To be a professional delivery skipper in France, there is a qualification that you get, a professional certification called Capitaine du Son, Cap Captain 200 Sail. And that's what uh, Benji has done. Um, he's been doing this now for over 10 years. So good for him, but I don't think I'm cut out to do that kind of work. Well, here we are, uh, safely arrived in La Trinité sur Mer after a long trip from, uh, oh, it started in Figueroa in Portugal uh, and then went to uh, Bayona, and then from Bayona across the Bay of Biscay to here. And a couple of themes came out. Uh, here in La Trinité sur Mer in France. So uh, a couple of thoughts. <laughs> um, there were some recurring themes. First of all, uh, this gave me a short glimpse of the life of a delivery captain. And uh, boy, I tip my hat to them. I have a ton of respect for them. They have to deliver boats to schedule for a boat show or for somebody wants to leave on their vacation from the Canary Islands and they've got to be there on a certain date and time. They sail in all kinds of weather and all kinds of conditions, and uh, boy, they, they sure have my respect. Um, the next time you meet one of them, him or her, uh, buy him or her a beer. They, uh, they certainly deserve it, and they, uh, they earn their money well. So, lots of respect for uh, boat delivery captains and uh, a new appreciation for that challenge. The second uh, theme that came across uh, on this trip for us, especially since we had some fairly robust winds, uh, I don't know, 25 knots, uh, gusting up to 35 uh, for much of the of the trip with uh, um, heavy seas. Is these fast, super fast boats, uh, performance yachts, um, that are cruising performance yachts because the interior is incredibly comfortable. Um, I mean, it's it's just wonderful on the interior. The external side, you know, you have to get used to the absence of a transom uh, here, but. Uh, Boy, does it ever go fast. It just, those basic formulas that we learned for calculating theoretical hull speed, they don't apply to this kind of a cock of a, of a, of a, of a, of a 
whole a whole shape because um, uh, they just fly. I mean, we were seeing all of the time 10, 11, and 12 knots. On In my boat, I'm ecstatic with joy when I see uh, 8 and the very, very occasionally 9 knots, uh, which is very, very rare. This boat, that's almost the default setting. 9 knots, if, if there's any wind at all, it goes straight to 9 knots. And uh, I remember at one point, um, the, as, right as we f were finishing here, the, the wind died on us a bit, right as we were in the last uh, 15, 20 miles. And we were only doing six knots, and I was feeling a little down because we were only doing six knots. Six knots in my boat is f wonderful. So, wow, these performance yachts are really fantastic. And if you add performance and comfort, wow, that's something special. So this one is made by, this is called an RM1270, made by Fora Marine in France. It was a great experience and uh, gave me an appreciation for a different kind of sailing to what I'm used to. And the third point I wanted to make was, I asked earlier, is this device here, this Garmin um, InReach Explorer, is this a gadget? And I want to just tell you what happened. It's definitely not a gadget. This is a, can be of use to, to mariners. Um, as we passed by the coast of Spain, Cap Finisterre, for those of you who are familiar, the, the land's end of Spain and heading out into the Bay of Biscay, the captain uh, of, the, of the boat, he, he actually picked up on his cell phone a weather report uh, for the Bay of Biscay that was completely different from what we had had previously. They were forecasting winds from the north at 45 knots. And uh, our forecast was winds from the south at 25 knots. So, uh, you know, we looked at each other and said, well, maybe we should divert. And uh, I grabbed, because in the 24 hours that we've been underway, maybe uh, the weather had changed that much. It does change very rapidly in the Bay of Biscay. That's not surprising. So, but with this, I called up and I got a weather report, that basic format, um, uh, that just confirmed all of the earlier forecasts that we'd had that the wind would be from the south 20, 20 25 knots uh, uh, and uh, the seas would be w what we experienced so based on that we decided to continue the mission so this actually helped us uh, get home so well well done so I guess uh, that this was a great experience I was just delighted that, to have been invited to uh, participate in a, in a boat delivery um, I'm, I'm not sure I'd ever want to make that my career, you know, the separation from family and friends and the hardships and the difficult weather conditions. Um, so again, I, I, I owe my captain a beer. <laughs> More than one, in fact. So, that ends this trip. Thanks very much for watching.